Attention span is one of those issues that just drives me bonkers because people have got it all wrong. If you want to know what's wrong with the whole attention span debate and three ways to increase your attention span no matter how much time you have to spend on the internet, then this video is for you. So that's coming right up. people who basically have to spend a lot of time on the computer they have to spend a lot of time wired to the internet and that's you know causing problems with the brain there's such a thing as digital amnesia I've written about it at length podcasted about it you're free to listen to me educate you about it because it's a real issue we are forgetting what we encounter online and worse than that there is this sort of erosion of attention span I'm not denying that attention span has changed there are these shifts going on however the problem with the discussion is is that they keep blaming the technology and this is absolutely wrong-headed useless and never going to help anybody you can't point your fingers at inanimate objects or machines or anything other than yourself so there's something called technological determinism and back in the day when cars first emerged the sociologists and the psychologists and the journalists they were all hot to trot to jump on blaming teenage pregnancy on cars right and uh, this is like a weird thing to do because cars do not make people have sex they might in some sense enable the travel of Jimmy Two Shoes to travel over to uh, Mary's place and pick her up and so forth but if you really look at the data there's not really great evidence that there was that many more teenage pregnancies and even if there were it's not the cars doing it it's the human behavior it's the people doing it and so you might be thinking yeah yeah but this is all just semantics right because uh, you know the people couldn't do it in that way or at that rate without the technology and at a certain level granted there is a semantic issue there and there is something about the technology being an enabler in the same way that my soul bottle is an enabler of me drinking water and remembering to drink water but the point is is that you can't go around blaming technology technology does not force you to have babies it doesn't force you to have a poor attention span you do it and you present yourself on the machine so if you have a job where you have to uh, be on the machine all the time and it's destroying your attention span then get a different job I mean it's just as simple as that because if you want a longer attention span then you just got to remove yourself from the things that are destroying attention span now obviously that's going to be a little bit unrealistic across the board although not entirely if you think about it but if you are stuck in trapped in a thing where you've got to use the internet a lot well here's three things you can do the first thing is you can develop a better attention span by choosing better educational material that has not been engineered to essentially give you a dopamine spike every 30 seconds so I'm giving you some educational material right now which has had a little bit of dopamine spiking in it in some initial edits but I actually think that the best material is unedited where you're listening to speakers who can hold your attention for the longer haul and you're not constantly looking for an edit or a cut or some radical amazing thing to happen like soul bottle salute to <laughs> change things up for a second so that you're somehow more engaged and so on this is not a way to increase your attention span rather seek out people who you find engaging and who can hold your attention and practice having your attention held by them so take notes and while you're taking notes here's a second tip doodle keep drawing let, let your body have a second track of activity so that you're better able to mentally hold on to what's going on around you at the verbal level so often I liked when I went to lectures to draw a lot and so I would take notes in drawing there's a technique you may have heard of 
called Mind Mapping, and uh, I've got a great interview with Tony Buzan. I've got two interviews with Phil Chambers that touch on mind mapping. Check that stuff out. Go into their training about mind mapping. It'll really help you increase your attention span because you're dual tracking your attention, really. So it's not like about overloading your attention is necessarily a bad thing. You can actually give yourself more to attend to and get more out of it. More memory, more depth of learning, and so forth. So it's not always about reduction. It can sometimes be about adding additional activities. So that's pretty exciting. And then the other thing that you can do, in addition to making better educational choices and then engaging with the educational choices that you make at a deeper and higher and more profound level by getting your body something to do and you know, just diving in, making notes and stuff. The other thing is to actually memorize the information that you have studied and rehearse it throughout the day. Because when you use memory techniques and you use something like magnetic memory method recall rehearsal, one of the things that you're going to do is automatically develop your attention span muscle. And nothing will be able to make that muscle weaker or hurt it or harm it except for lack of use. And you don't have to suffer lack of use by just using continued use. So I got an email today from someone who said, yeah, I had some initial results with Chinese and the magnetic memory method, and uh, then it sort of faded away because I stopped using it. Well, <laughs> there you go. You know, I go to the gym over here three times a week. I do a particular thing. My wife said, hey, could you make yourself look like Christian Bale, you know, physically? And I thought, well, I don't know, but I'll give it a try. I did some research and started heading on over to the gym and, you know, well, feeling pretty good. Uh, but if I stop going, all those muscles that I developed, not necessarily overnight, but soon enough, they will fade. Same thing with my memory. I just was at the library working on a new book, but I took some time to memorize some cards. And uh, why would I do that? Do I have some pressing need to remember cards? Well, at the moment, no, I do not. But what I do have is a pressing need to keep my mind sharp, my memory hopping, and to live the life of memory. Because card memory has effects, mental fitness effects, that apply to everything else that you might want to memorize. So what you need to do is have consistency and have absolute amazing clarity in what it is that you want to do and then just show up and train and do it and it doesn't matter if it's memory training or just general knowledge training or attention span training because if you're pointing the finger at anyone other than you then you're never going to get better but if you just look at yourself look at your consumption habits make a little change then your attention span will automatically grow because how could it not otherwise so I hope that this video has helped you experience the way that you could make some very meaningful and useful and helpful changes with your attention span. But it all starts with looking in the mirror, owning it, and then doing something. And uh, another little tip, last little one, meditate. Because meditation doesn't just help you with concentration, doesn't just help you with focus, it just doesn't, it's not just about some sort of spiritual woo-woo sort of la-di-da stuff, but what it'll also do is it'll give you a sense of presence in the world at a higher level, and you might make better choices about how you spend your time so that you take the authentic things that you want to be doing in your life and you make them real instead of getting into slaves luck or golden handcuffs, which is what so many of these jobs that force you to be doing things that you don't want to be doing does to you. Yeah, you know? What's the use of making 200K a year or a million a year or a billion a year if every single day you show up to that job and you're completely miserable and you can't focus on anything because you hate it? It's useless. It's the golden handcuffs. Slaves luck. So meditation is a great way to help you have an attention span on your own life because most of us don't focus on ourselves enough long enough to even understand who we are what we want what we need and so forth so that's my rant for today about attention span and technological determinism look into that stuff it's really really spooky how we want 
machines to take responsibility for the negative things that are happening to us. Only, only we have responsibility and only you as an individual have responsibility. So drink lots of water, keep your brain hydrated. That is one of the greatest things that you can do. Use your memory and if you want some memory training, head over to magneticmemorymethod.com because I got a whole bunch more for you there and it's all designed as best as I can to hold and keep your attention span in healthy ways that will allow you to remember and recall not just anything because you can certainly reply to anything but to the things that matter. Thanks for watching and until we speak again keep yourself magnetic.